Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Juliana and finally I'm back to talk about my well last Christmassy should we say uh, review video or book <laughs> uh, that is Winter Solstice by Rosamund Pilcher. Well first of all I hope you have a very Merry Christmas if you celebrate it. Uh, mine went very well. I'm very happy and excited now for the new year. I love this limbo, this week limbo where you are between Christmas and the new year. <laughs> it's, I don't know how to explain it. I think everyone, at least who celebrates Christmas, feels like this right it's like the time doesn't exist and you are in a, a limbo really but yeah so today uh, we'll be talking about winter solstice this is my well really old copy but i have to say that i really enjoyed this book at the beginning, it, it, well, I was coming from some readings that were more dry, I think I can describe it like that. And, and so when I entered the reading of this book, Winter Solstice, I became to understand that the author, Rosamund Pilcher, was very particular in her descriptions of things like clothes, um, rooms, houses, landscapes. Uh, and at the beginning, I was found finding it a bit <laughs> stalling, you know, like, why does she dwell on this? and doesn't go straight forward to the plot but after a while i be i began to appreciate these descriptions because you really got the picture in your head of what she was saying i mean where where the characters were how they were presented everything you know like and it's funny because from a young age from a young age i i i liked uh, this kind of detailed descriptions but for some reason i don't know if it was because of the books that i in the between came to read that i dishabituated i know this, this isn't a word uh, from it and uh, then when I pick up a book that was descript descriptive it was a bit odd for me but you know it's a, a question of getting used to it and you get into the flow of the writing of this author of Rosamund Pilcher and it's wonderful I think this is a very circular story and well okay so this is divided in chapters and every chapter is is objectivized to a particular character so we have Elfrida, Oscar, Lucy, Carrie and Sam. These are the main characters so the characters that have chapters individualized to them then we have other characters that are secondary characters but of course they are still important and some of them will appear in more than one character chapter so they are common to some characters because some of these characters are connected i mean familiarly so they are aunts or cousins or 
father and daughter, mother and daughters, so stuff like that. And so, um, I can't really talk about, because I don't want to give you any spoilers, but something that I have to say right up front is that this book talks about grieving. And it's not just one particular grieving, it's a, um, a spectrum of types of grieving. Grieving because someone died, grieving because you lost a lover, grieving because you got separated, grieving because you don't feel loved by your family or you don't get the attention that maybe you should get, grieving because some part of your life is now over and you have to start anew. So those types of situations in life that well, generally, every single person in the world will go through in some point. So, um, I think this is very... How can I explain it? You connect with these characters. At least I did. And I can say that I uh, identified myself with every situation. Of course not. But I think... A detail there or other detail in other character you identify with the feelings and with the situations that these characters are going through so the book starts with Elfrida that's one of our main characters and she kind of is the lead of this book Winter Solstice so she's 62 years old she was an actress for her career. She's now kind of retired because she was living with another actor, a famous, a more famous actor than she was, but he died from um, degenerative disease. But that part of her life is not presented so much here. When we start reading, she has already moved from London so far the so the the person the Jimbo I think that's how she calls him has already died she moves from London to Hampshire to Dipton so from the interior of England the countryside she goes there to a cottage a small cottage uh, and she she wants to start anew, she wants to, well, kind of have her few or some years that she has to live in a quiet place and far away from the city. So she, she wanted a new start. And there she gets to meet the... Blundells, the Blundell family, particularly Gloria, that's the wife, and she's kind of bossy, uh, stunning figure. With she wants to be the center of attention. Elfrida gets to know her a bit, and uh, she's married to Oscar. That he's a musician. He works for the choir of the church, he's an organist, and so Gloria is kind of rich because she got inherited the house where they live in, in Dipton, and Oscar and Gloria have a, a teenage girl, Francesca, she's 11 to 12 years old, and Gloria was already married previously to Oscar, so she has two adult sons that they are in their own lives, so uh, they are not living with her. But Gloria kind of adopts Elfrida and invites her to dinner, to lunch, 
to a anything in their house, to parties, to... So Gloria kind of welks, um, welcomes Elfrida to the town or to the village. And this kind of get Elfrida, know the neighbors and so on and so forth. And so Frida, of course, appreci appreciates it, but she identifies more with Oscar than to Gloria. Gloria is a bit, as I was saying before, she wants to be the center of attention. She wants to control the situation, manipulate a bit. So, you know, she's bossy. And Elfrida doesn't identify so much with that type of attitude, but Oscar is more calm more subtle, more, you know, ponders, he ponders the situation and he's not, he doesn't want to uh, charge the thing. And Elfrida likes him a bit more and she likes as well Francesca a lot. But then time goes by, um, she passes summer there, so she moves in to Dipton, I think, during spring, then she the, the summer passes and is coming the autumn and she decides to go to uh, to pass by a month in a cousin's house and well uh, she goes and she kind of disconnects from the people of her, her village in Dipton because she wants to get out to see new things to Pass um, reset time by this cousin house, Jeffrey, I think. Uh, and so then when she gets back, she will be very surprised. Now, I won't say what happened because that will be a spoiler, of course. And well, there is when the grief, uh, beyond the grief of Elfrida uh, that I explained to you, uh, will start and a new project, a new plan will ensue. The thing is, everything will culminate. So all these characters that I talked to you about, they have chapters for each one of them in this book, will have a common place in Scotland, an estate house in Cregan, where they will meet and everything will make sense. They will end up leading up to Christmas. They will end up there. Everyone is with their problems and with, with yes, with their problems and with their griefs, as I was saying, and everything will be adaptable and moldable in a in a particular and almost funny and endearing type of way they all will have a happy ending but the ending will not be described to you so everything will be hinted at but you will not see them in their ending should, I think, I hope I'm explaining myself well. So I talked to you about Elfrida, I'll talk to you about the Blundells. So Carrie is, uh, so the second degree cousin of Elfrida, because Carrie is the daughter of Jeffrey, so the cousin where Elfrida went to pass a month because Jeffrey is divorced from Carrie's mom and he's living with a younger woman and they have two children. So he's in his life and Carrie was working in Austria, she was in tourism and she gets back to London and then she kind of doesn't want to but she ends up to talk to her mother because they don't have the greatest relationship 
Um, Debbie, Debbie, Toddy, Toddy, I think is her mother's name, and she has a sister, Nicola, and Nicola is all, um, also divorced, but she lives with her mother, so mother and, and the oldest daughter live in together in an apartment, and Nicola has a daughter, Lucy, that is the niece of Carrie, of course. And so Carrie is grieving because she lost her lover. And at the, at the start of her, her chapters, we won't understand really what happened, but she will think about him and remember him and dream with him. But later, everything will be unfolded to us. And you will understand why their relationship was complicated and why it end up in the way it did and why Carrie is, you know, hurt. Lucy, on the other hand, is a teenager of 14 years old that is living, as I was saying, with her mother and her grandmother. But those two women are kind of pretty much selfish and egocentric and so Lucy poor thing is kind of left on her own she can't bring friends to the apartment because the Dodi the grandmother says she gets headaches and they do too much noise um, you know the type and Nicola found a new boyfriend that is American and the problem is that Nicola the mother of Lucy wants to pass Christmas in Florida America with the new boyfriend and Lucy doesn't want to go to America because she doesn't want to be far away from what she knows and in a country that she doesn't she doesn't know, so she doesn't want to get out of her familiar place. And so that's a whole thing, because Nicola wants to go, and the grandmother has her own plans for Christmas, and she wants to pass Christmas with her rich friends in whatever place. Now I don't remember. And so Lucy, it's kind of... <laughs> Well, yeah, poor thing, right? So Carrie, it's kind of obliged to resolve the situation. And that's where Elfrida comes in. And, you know, everything will be a snowball. And although every chapter is for a specific character, the stories, of course, as you can understand by now, are interconnected. And so the, the flow of the story will go on along of the days that are passing by uh, in the perspective of the different characters, which is very refreshing. And uh, the, the chapters are not... Some, some of them are a bit longer than others, but in a um, rough... A, a rough kind of way they are not too long so you can pause your reading um, freq frequently to get a breath and you know you won't get bored or you won't feel that the story is dragging because the perspective of although the story is the same and the plot is well is going towards the same thing you will get the point of view sometimes of the same situation from different characters and that's that's wonderful i think that it turns the the reading very fluid and very fun and so that's what i felt it's a very although this is about grieving it's not a dramatic and heavy and 
it, you know, it's not like that. It's more subtle. It's more... You will get the feelings, but it, it won't be graphic or extremely descriptive of the pain of the characters. It's not that type of reading. It's a bit more light, although sad, but lighter. And as I was saying before, I, in a kind of way I said a spoiler, but it will have a happy ending. So don't be um, afraid to go to this reading just because it talks about grieving. So some things that will happen, so as you can understand by now, this is coming up to Christmas and this book will end in Christmas Eve. So the last two chapters will not be from a perspective of one single character, but will the, 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 penult the second to last chapter will be Elfrida's party and then the last chapter is Christmas Eve. And then we have a, a mingle of points of view. But in this book uh, will happen Christmas miracles. So you will have a light death happening, so be aware of that. In my humble opinion, I don't think you will be too down because of this event. Because I think the way that the author presents it to you, you kind of expect it. And it's not so much a character that you were so attached to anyway. But you are expecting that. And it kind of makes sense. Okay? So be aware of it, but don't be deterred by it. And as I was saying, Christmas miracles will happen. And uh, something that I really enjoyed, as you... Oh, Oscar is 68 years old. Lucy is 14, Carrie is 30, and Sam is almost 40. So Sam in here is... Um, I forgot about Sam. <laughs> because Sam only appears a bit... The, in the middle to the end of the book uh, and he will be a fun part in this story um, and an important part as well but it's kind of not so much the main focus um, well never mind Sam is, is important but Sam is a man in his late 30s that was working for six years in New York. He had a wife, but he separated because she, well, she found another man and she wants to be with him and not Sam. And he was in New York working for a conglomerate. And then he gets a proposal to come to the UK and go to work in Scotland in a mill um, that he has to redo, to uh, redesign, to... It's an old building but a, a traditional and a century building that he has to remodelate and to make it work, employ workers that are specialized in the artsanet, artsanet? in the art of the mill I don't know how well to explain this I'm sorry but um, he gets in charge of it of it and it's in Scotland in Inverness if I'm not mistaken and well he will know Elfrida and Carrie and other characters in Scotland and they will end up together I won't say in <laughs> what circumstances but because you have to read it and it's really funny really 
and unexpected, but at the same time, you kind of think this will never happen. But at the same time, when you are reading, everything makes sense. It's not forced, you know, because the way that Pilcher writes, the flow of the events that are begun to happen, that begin to happen in this plot, make sense and are kind of natural and organic. I think that's the better description that I can give you. And yeah, it's so endearing and everything kind of, it's kind of a puzzle that every piece is kind of putting, fitting in together. Um, and then you zoom out and everything kind of makes sense to you. So, and the end, the last words of this of this book are really, you know, yes, it, it has to come up like this, it had to end like this. So, so to end up this video, I think it's too long already, every single character is passing, is passing through their own pro problems, their own things that they have to go through, their, their own type of grieving but they will all help each other out to pass by it and go through it and it all happens during christmas christmas time and i have to say that i start reading this in the last weeks of november and so when i got to the part when Elfrida was in the cousin house, it was November, and then after that, when the the story and uh, um, enters in December, I almost read it at the same time in the days leading up to Christmas. At the same time, the at the days it was happening in the book. And so I was like in 21 of December, 21 to 23 of December, I was reading it and it, I was following, following it in real time, uh, almost, you know what I mean? So it was really fun. I was really in the mood. It got me more excited for Christmas because everything that was happening in this book, in this story, and or it was wonderful. I really advise you to pick this one up. If, he, if this is your type of genre and vibe, but I think you will really enjoy it and you will really end up the book with a smile in your face. So I spoil you, I spoiled you uh, enough <laughs> I think so please go and read this one and for to end the video I think I will see you in the 31st Saturday right no Sunday Sunday um in the 30 or in the 31st now i don't know exactly where when i will post the last video of the year but that will be the december book for the challenge 12 books for 23 so that's the last book i have in my tbr for this month i was kind of trying to put in little women by louisa may alcott but I don't know if I'm going to finish it uh, in 23. We shall see. So, I hope you are all well and you are having and you are excited for the new year that is coming and for the, fest the last festivity of 23. I am. 
So please, please go pick this one up. Really worth it. This looks like a chunk of a book, but as you can see, this is very small. So the pages add up. It's normal, but the, um, the flow of the reading will be fast. I assure you. And it's very warm to the heart. Yes. So that's the last thing I will say. Okay, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already. Don't forget to press the ring bell button to all so you can receive all my notifications. Leave a like, it helps a lot the divulgation of the video and the divulgation of the channel. Go and follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, X, Twitter. Do I have more? I don't think so. The links will be down below and at the end card of this video you will see my names on all of them. So please go follow me there and so we can be more connected and I will see you on the next one. Bye!